Greetings all you lustful lambasters and welcome back to Waifu Wars. The shorter looks at the greatest waifus to see which are truly waifu -ers. Now before we get to the proper episode, firstly voting for episode 3 will be up on my Patreon. Wait, 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 don't click away. I'll make it quick, I swear. To decide the Halloween Waifu Wars, voting on it will cost you $10 a month over on Patreon. So if you've got the money to spare and feel like supporting me and really want to keep this series going, then there'll be a link down below and there'll be a link to the Patreon itself at the end card. And with that out of the way, now it's time to announce the winner of last episode, Hell of a Boss and Haspin Hotel, or the Vivzy verse as I call it. And the winner is... Millie! Yeah, her and Charlie were actually very close with Millie winning by one vote and Luna being dead last. Sorry furries, but at least I was right. But anyway, congrats Millie, you are obviously the best waifu with the Vivzy verse. Alright, alright, now let's get to why you all came here at the next episode. We're talking about Undertale waifus. If you think this game doesn't have waifus, then you have not been on the internet long enough, have you? And since I know you all want to hear about Goat Mom, then stick around because I'm covering her last. Saving the best for last, as it were. And following that logic, let's do the worst first. Alphys. Yes, Alphys. And you know, the world would be a very negative place if you didn't say some positive, so let's say some good things about Alphys. First of all, you know me, I'm a lover of the International House of Short Stacks. And Alphys is a major shorty. Not as short as, say, Tem, who's literally supposed to be only 2 feet apparently, but she's estimated to be about 5 foot 4, so she's small. She's also kind of thick all over. But we don't fat shame, we chub appreciate over here. Plus chub only means there's more for her to grip and cushion and to love. I want a pillow to actually fuck, not a stick. Not to mention her awkwardness is kind of adorable. Awkward girls are cute to mess with, they just get flustered so easily. Also, she's a dinosaur. Dinosaurs are cool. Sadly though, this is kind of where my positives end for Alphys as she's kind of the worst. Like, she is annoying as hell. Give her your number and she will not stop talking about her favorite animes and whatever. I'm getting kind of super clingy girlfriend vibes off of her. She's also literally everything I hate about weeb culture. Yeah, she's a weeb, but not the cool weeb like the trash taste guys. No, she's more like the one weeb friend who talks her head off about her favorite anime and will not shut the hell up about it. Also, let's not forget, it's her fault Metaton attacks you. Oh, uh, spoilers for this game about two seconds ago. But yeah, she's proof that short sex can't be saved by bad attitude. Well, not so much bad, just annoying. I guess the only other redeeming thing about her is that her relationship with Undyne is adorable. Like seriously, when you actually redeem her, she becomes a much better person, but it's too little too late, honestly. So final thoughts, Alphys I would not mind being fuck buddies with as she does seem kind of cool in the beginning, but she's also very clingy and I would stop the second that happened. Lord knows my anime backlog is bad enough without her making it worse. The backstage shenanigans will be fun while it lasts though. 4 out of 10. Well, we covered Alphys, now let's do Undyne. Now we're getting into the good stuff. First of all, buff girls are bae as far as I'm concerned. Just muscles all over, not just her arms, but her belly. I mean, you could probably grate cheese on there. I don't care if they're blue, ripply blue fish muscles are awesome as far as I'm concerned. I just want to put my head right between those thick thighs and have her crush me like a watermelon. Sure, she's probably a member of the blue fish group with the way she looks, but that probably just means she can dance and use those spears for... other things. But wait, there's more. See, Undyne is the anime protagonist incarnate. She gives everything 100% no matter what. She cooks to the max, she fights to the max, she even dates to the max. Maybe I'd be exhausted afterwards, but hopefully the bed breaking will be worth it. Hell, she even likes to cook, although her extreme cooking can go a little too far, hence why I would do the cooking. I don't want my house to burn down. She can still help, she's just staying far away from the spears. And if you plan to make her your waifu, then you better be ready to have a buff girl who wants you buff. If Alphys is anything to go by, then she's gonna make you work out to hell and back. At least they'll get Papyrus to do it, so that'll be cool, but yeah. And who knows, maybe for some of you, that'd be hot having a partner that does that. But no, not me. Do I look like a fit motherfucker? Yeah, no thanks. Actually, sex is considered a workout, so maybe this could work. Anyway, final thoughts. Undyne is a undying fish girl who I would gladly go through hell for her backside. Although now that I mention it, the smell might need some getting used to. My bit will probably smell like a fish market. Hashtag worth it. 8 out of 10. Now the next one's gonna be a bit of an odd one, but I wanted four waifus this time, so let's talk about Muppet. Yes, you heard me. Muppet. We're getting spiders up in here, so if you're an arachnophobe, you might want to leave. So why Muppet? Well, I'm not putting Susie on here since that's Deltarune. Also, she's the worst. Plus, there aren't really any other waifus out there. At least not ones that have close to 2,000 entries on E621. Yeah, I'm not joking. I guess you all want that succulent spider ass, don't you? Hey, I don't blame you guys, he's cute as fuck. Sure, he's not chubby like Alphys and he's not buff like Undyne, he's kind of in the middle, but he's still super cute in the face and body. I mean, just look at this dance. Oh my god, he's so precious. But he's also a baker. She makes all kinds of goods like spider cakes and spider donuts. 
No, not those kind of donuts, you pervert. This is a cultured show, damn it. But with all those hands, just think of all the fun that could be done. Think about it. So you can cook, so you can clean, and give you head pats all at the same time. Now that's some wife skills. That being said, yeah, C is extremely cute, but there are way hotter waifus in this universe. Heck, we just covered one. Besides, those spiderwebs may be fun for some things, but they are a pain in the ass to wash off. Don't ask how I know that. I also would be scared to eat her cooking, because if I don't like it, then C's gonna stick her baby on me. So final thoughts, Muffet is definitely underrated in the Undertale universe as far as waifus. I mean, she has multiple arms for cleaning and cooking and multiple things. Heck, she can even bake, and I love me a good baker. But her looks are kinda average, not to mention the multiple eyes. Yeah, I could see that being a turnoff for people. Not me though, more eyes just means more to gaze into. I would just have to find the right one. 7 out of 10. Alright, I saved the best for last for the Undertale waifus. We finally get to talk about Toriel, the best waifu by far. Yeah, I'm spoiling the ending, screw it, I do what I want. Besides, Goat Mom is Goat Milf, this is a no-brainer. For one thing, we now have the trifecta. We had short stacks, we had buff girls, now we have MILFs. She is easily one of... Hell, scratch that, she may be THE best MILF ever. Her motherly instincts are strong as hell. The second you meet her, she basically adopts you. Treating you well, making you a delicious pie for every night. Having made it myself, I could say it is delicious, and I would instantly fall in love with her if she made it. But that's another thing, her kindness. It's honest to god one of her greatest features. She's an absolute sweetheart to the point where she will protect you no matter what. But she's a double whammy. She's not just a MILF, she's a TALL MILF. She's estimated to be 8 feet tall or so. But wait, there's more. She is thick too. She's chubby all over and is thick all over. Just look at any art of her, even the safe stuff, and damn, she's got meat on her. And unlike Alpha, she has an amazing personality. And since you're not blood related, it's not wrong. That wasn't meant to sound as creepy as it was, but you get my point. There is honestly something great about someone who has a hot body but is wholesome. And yes, she is wholesome. I prefer that interpretation, honestly. I don't know why I consider that hot. Maybe it's just the wholesome personality combined with a hot body. So final thoughts? Man, weren't you listening? She's thick and tall with an amazing personality and she's a MILF. She's honestly someone I would love to have in my life. Also, I bet she is soft with her fur. So sign me up for that pie. 10 out of 10. And there you have it, the waifus of Undertale are laid out and rated before you. Now it's your turn everyone, so comment down below ranking these fine ladies 1 through 4, with 1 getting 4 votes and 4 getting 1 vote. And if you want, you can also leave your thoughts as well on what you think of them, whether you agree or disagree with me. And then for episode 3, I'll announce the winner. And yes, there will be a next time, so be sure to subscribe to see episode 3 when it finally drops. Also remember that voting for episode 3 is up on my Patreon. We got some interesting choices since we're covering Halloween. But that's all I got for you. I'm the Watcher One saying keep on watching and happy waifu hunting.